My message tonight is a word of encouragement. It is a word of uh, ad admonishing. To admonish you tonight, to encourage you, to admonish is to encourage and to warn simultaneously. Be oppressor. Don't be a fool. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, be a presser. Don't be a fool. Amen. Father, bless us now as we preach the gospel with power and authority. We ask that you would anoint us. We do no damage to the word, but preach that which become of sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The fool, 14 and 1a of Psalms, and the same is true with Psalms 53 and 1a. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Contrast that passage, this passage, those passages to Luke 16 and 16b, the kingdom is preached and every man presseth into it. Be a presser. Don't be a fool. I want to encourage the attendees and all that will hear this sermon to North Carolina Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Auxiliaries and Ministries Conference. I want to encourage you to be pressers yes, and not fools. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. I want to begin this message tonight by making a confession. Matter of fact, I want to make a huge confession tonight. And you know, if I'm going to own this by saying it publicly and knowing that they're streaming and it's on social media and will be on television and YouTube and wherever our ministry ends up, by the way, the Lord willing, by the end of next month, and we'll send the word out, uh, uh, North Carolina Third, yours truly will launch, and we will be broadcasting into 60 million homes across this country of ours. God is good. And we'll be preaching this kind of gospel. No chain. The gospel of Jesus Christ with power and authority without apology. Say amen. We'll be on the TCT network. Our times that we've agreed to is um, Monday morning. It's a wonderful time at 1 a.m. Say, well, Pastor, we won't be up. Tape it. But you know, uh, in the world of broadcasting, especially Christian television. People who watch Christian television during those wee hours are people who are hurting. People who are looking for answers. That's the market. Troubled people. Amen. And so I praise the Lord for that open door. And it's a, a promise kept because one of the things that was on our List was to return to uh, the national uh, airways. But I want to make a confession tonight. This confession has something to do with my faith or lack thereof. It has to do with my inability to suspend belief talking about me. This admission has to do with my failure to not pay attention to all that I see. 
my failure to not suspend reason and common sense. It has to do with my innate refusal to shut down my brain. This confession has to do with my unwillingness to ignore the singing of the birds, the mooing of cattle, the swimming of fish, and the overall music that nature makes. My confession, my admittance, my clearing of the air is this. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I won't admit it. I don't have it. What it takes to be an atheist, I cannot produce. For to become an atheist, I must Believe something contrary to all that I see. I must believe something that is contrary to overwhelming evidence. I've got to do a lot of hiding my eyes and putting my fingers in my ears. And I can't even inhale. I can't even inhale the breeze to believe that there is no God. For the evidence that God exists is overwhelming. The, the truth is tonight that I am too intelligent, too reasonable, too smart. I'm too learned. I have too much common sense to come to such a stupid conclusion. Do I have anyone else in here who is too learned, too wise, too reasonable, too smart? It doesn't take nothing but a, a kindergarten education. I was, I was a little tight when I learned Yes, Jesus loved me, for the Bible tells me so. When I was small and I learned, now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. I didn't go to a seminar, seminary to learn that. I have to ignore all of these things to come to this conclusion. AIM Conference, why did I call uh, this conclusion st a stupid conclusion? Why I use the word Stupid. Why not use a more delicate sounding word? Well, the reason I chose the word stupid is that that is the word that God used. I didn't make it up. The word fool. Nabal is the Hebrew word means first and foremost, stupid. Somebody say stupid. And then secondly, it is impious. A pious individual is a righteous individual. But an impious individual is a wicked person. It is a person who lacks reverence. A person who fails to show proper respect. Somebody shout, fool. fool. The fool, the Nabal, the stupid, the wicked have said in their heart that there is no God. 7% of Americans identify themselves as atheists. Atheism along with its first cousin, humanism, are the fastest growing religions in America. From 2007 to 2014, atheism and agnosticism yes, have grown from 4 to 
And as of 2014, 15.8% of Americans are religiously unaffiliated and those numbers are growing. Amen. The agnostic is one who says, I'm not sure whether there's a God or not. The atheist is one who makes the declar declaration, there is no God. And these numbers are growing. And the influence of atheistic thinkers in our day is widespread in most colleges. This is where one of the uh, breeding grounds, this is why it's so important, uh, churches, to have church. You see, as we shorten our services. As the preachers preach more and more about things that really doesn't matter. As we de-emphasize doctrine. I wonder how many of us could, if I gave you the microphone without notice, how many of us could, without any emotion whatsoever, explain how we know that we're saved? You can't have Rocky. You can't ask the people to give you an amen. Your every sentence can't be hyphenated with praise God. Yes, sir. Praise God. Praise Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Are you able to say with the doctrine? Huh? See, we got to go further than something got a hold of me. For after we finish with that and we've spoken in tongues, the sinner will say, what was it? So many times we send our young people off to college. They love the Lord, but they don't know the Lord. And they don't know the doctrine. Some because the churches didn't teach it, and others that were churches that would teach, but parents, you wouldn't bring them to church. You thought that other things were more important. Oh yeah, they played all the sports. Oh yeah, they have all of the Game Boys, all of the video games, all, oh my Lord, all of the things that will set them up to be deceived because we did not do one of the first things that God told Israel to do when they entered into the land of Canaan. He said, sit down and talk to your children about me. This is AIM conference. Talk to them at the dinner table. Put my word where they can read it. Put my word in them. Some of you, you don't talk to your children about Jesus. You talk to your children about the church. And when half the time, it's against the church. Then they go to college. And they walk into the classroom where, where the professor is the authority. And they are taught writings from uh, teachings from existentialists, excuse me, like John Paul Sater and communists like Karl Marx and capitalists like Aaron Rand and psychologists like Sigmund Freud, B.F. Skinner. Freud gave us the God is dead movement. Said what happened to God according to Sigmund Freud? We killed him. And so uh, as the, 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 the student uh, sits in the classroom, with no Bible, no, Bible. no knowledge of the word because the church didn't teach the word. It was a church where all they taught uh, evangelists was they didn't teach the thou's and the thou shall not. Here's what the preacher preached about. Your haters. Come on, Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. 
Here's what they preached about. Getting your stuff back. I'm I'm so tired of stuff sermons. Messages that are filled with materialism. And we didn't teach them how to witness. How to share the faith. How to defend the faith. And you wonder why your child shows no interest in God. Elder Armand Chukwu was right. As a matter of fact, he and Elder Quick, Chairman Bamberg, they have preached this week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he was right uh, when we talked about, uh, you know, we talk about the millennials and they're the worst thing that ever happened to hear some of us say. But the truth is, children, for the most part, are the results of their parents. What the parents tolerate in their uh, generation becomes a way of life in their children's generation. Let me read something to you, a little something I just happened to have here. It says, young people today think of nothing but themselves. They have not reference for parents or old age. They are impatient of all restraint. They talk as if they know everything. And what passes for wisdom with us is foolishness to them. These words were written by Peter the monk in 1274. So then, it's so today. We have a parenting problem. Parents, we have not made our children going to heaven a priority. That's right. That's right. A poll was taken of Christian parents, and when they asked them, what, what do you want for your children? The numbers, the, the percentage was less than 5% of parents who said, I want my children to go to heaven. Oh, you should have heard what they want for their children. I want my child to be a doctor. I want my child to be a lawyer. I want my child to be the president. I want my child to be a professional athlete. I want my child to be this. I want my child to be that. But, but precious few said, I want my children to go to heaven. They can't go to heaven without knowing the Lord. And, and we wonder why they go to college and then they come back and they come back and they don't have any excitement for Jesus Shame on you, you're a college age kid and you don't even know how to shout. Now you can, you can hip hop dance. You can break down. You, you, can, you can do all those moves now. You know Jay-Z, the devil himself. You know Beyonce, the devil's wife. You're good at that, but you know very little about the God of the Bible. I want to tell you tonight, be a presser but not a fool. Can I get a witness in here? These, these uh, atheists, praise the Lord, these people are in our universities, their teachings. Yes, all of these great thinkers came to a theological conclusion that God himself called stupid. That God himself called a fool. And this stupidity isn't new. Matthew Henry said this, we are sometimes tempted to think, surely there never was so much atheism and profaneness as there is in our days. Yeah. But we see uh, that former days were no better. Right. For even in Psalms, they had to address this. Yeah, now, on. allow me, I want you to just bear with me a few more minutes. Uh, allow me to digress for a moment and dig a little deeper in this word fool. Can I do that? George A.F. Knight wrote this. He said the book of Proverbs has a lot to say about fools. He said we find six different words for fool in the book of Proverbs. And said we can arrange them uh, we believe in, a, in an ascending scale of foolishness. 
One word, the first word, I won't mention the word because you won't remember it, but the definition for the first word, fool, uh, is a silly mule. <laughs> the second is, uh, uh, come from a Hebrew word, that means a stupid person. The third Hebrew word uh, for fool means an idiot. Amen. And uh, the fourth one is a complete fool. Can I get a witness? Amen. Uh, then <laughs> the, uh, the, the fifth is uh, the word that it literally means impious. Woo! Impious. Uh -huh. And uh, the last word uh, is the sneerer, the arrogant free thinker. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The psalmist in our text felt no need to go beyond the fifth court category. That is the impious man. Uh, to his way of thinking, to deny God's love, to deny God's care, to deny God's intervention is the climax of imbecility. You got to be an imbecile to believe that God doesn't love us, to believe that God doesn't care, and to believe that God doesn't intervene. Allow me, if you will, to dig just a little deep. Atheism, as we know it today, was virtually non-existent in the ancient world. For in the ancient world, you know, I just told you, Matthew Henry said that, that, that it existed, but not as we know it today. See, in the ancient world, you virtually found no one who believed that there was no God. Right. For in the ancient world, the ancients had many gods. Yes, right. Everybody had their own God. Yes, right. Everybody had a whole bunch of gods. Yes, right. Matter of fact, you remember when Paul preached to the Athenians. Yes, right. He said in Acts 17, he says, uh, you are too superstitious. You are too religious. Because, yes. see, in Athens, the, the streets of Athens were crowded like the streets of New York City. Uh, on uh, New Year's Eve, just packed out with people. But in Athens, you would it would be you would more often run into a god than you would a human being, even though it was packed with people. Gods were everywhere, and they thought that Paul had complimented them when he said, "You are too religious." too superstitious or religious. He said, I noticed that just in case you missed one, you even built an altar that said to the unknown God. So in the ancient world, there were multiple gods. There was much polytheism. Are you with me? So then what is uh, being said here? The text is actually, when the text says that there, the fool have said, that there is no God. What he's saying is, there is no God who is personally interested in us. He's actually saying there is no God who will intervene and check us when we mistreat other people. He's actually saying there is no God who will recompense us for our evil ways. He's saying in the text that there is no Psalms 139 God. A God who is involved in our lives. Oh, we're going to find out that uh, there may be more fools in here than we thought. You see, because there, there may be very few people in here who believe that there is no God. Hopefully there's nobody, but that's not the only fool. That's right. And that is not the only expression of atheism. You are behaving like an atheist when you believe you can do anything you want to and that God will do nothing. The Bible calls that foolishness. They don't believe that there's a God who, uh, Psalm 139, David says, Lord, O oh Lord, thou have searched me and know me. Thou knowest my down sittings and my uprisings, and thou understandest my thoughts from afar. 
thou compasseth my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all of my ways for there is not a word in my tongue but lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. What a mighty God. Thou hast set me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. The fool says there is no God. Who knows us like that? Who intervenes on that level? The fool says, there is no Psalms 103 God. Psalms 103, you know it, says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. He says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not his benefits. That is, forget not all of his benefits. What does he do? He intervenes. He who forgives us of our iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The fool have said, there is no such God. Somebody glorify him, if you will. The fool have said, there is no Romans 12 and 19 God. Romans 12 and 19 said, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to vengeance, for vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. See, the fool have said, God will do nothing. And Jeremiah, uh, 50, Jeremiah 5 and 12 reflects this kind of thinking. 5 and 12 and verse 21 through 24. Verse 12 said, they have belied the Lord and said, uh, it is not he. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see the sword nor famine. That is, in their wickedness, they said, God will do nothing. That's right. Ain't nobody coming to get us. We're not going to see a sword. We're not going to see famine. Nothing will happen. America have said we can kill babies and nothing will happen. This nation have said we can redefine marriage and nothing will happen. This nation have declared, praise the Lord, immorality to be all right. And we behave as though nothing will happen. I'm here to say that is foolishness. You are behaving like an imbecile because there is a God. God said in verse 21 through 24, he says, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, foolish which have ears and hear not, fear ye not me, the Lord asks, saith the Lord, uh, will you not tremble at my presence, uh, which have placed the sand for the bounds of the sea by a perpetual degree. You mean to tell me you don't reverence me? Praise the Lord. You don't reverence me? I'm so mighty that I set boundaries for the sea. Oh, yeah, you, you, you're going to be laid back when you approach me. You're going to show up to see me in flip-flops and short pants and treat me like I'm nobody special. You're going to behave any way you want to. And I'm so mighty that the, the rage and sea can't go beyond the boundaries that I have set up. He said I, they won't go because I've given a perpetual decree that it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail, though they roar. Yet they uh, shall not, they cannot pass over it. For this people have, this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth us rain, both the former and the latter rain in his season. He, rever he reverseth, he reverseth 
unto us, praise the Lord, the appointed weeks of the harvest. We serve a God who is, is he, he reserves, excuse me, unto us the weeks of the harvest. He blesses us. He gives us rain. He does all these things. And you mean to tell me we're not going to reverence him? We're not going to respect him? We're not going to lift him up? I wonder tonight, do I have anybody here in here who will just lift their hands and reverence the God of the Bible? Praise the Lord. Tell him thank you. Show him that you fear him. Show him tonight that you're not a fool. Good God Almighty. I, I, God, I have too much sense than to not lift my hands. I have too much sense than to not tell you thank you. I have too much sense uh, than to be a fool and pretend as though you're not real. Oh, he's real tonight. God Almighty. God Almighty. Their thinking uh, was that God wouldn't do anything. Don't you let nobody fool you. There's a price to pay for disobeying God. Don't let nobody fool you that there is a time of visitation. See, you can walk in sin and look like you're getting away. You're not getting away. God just hadn't visited it yet. Now, if you're in it when he visits, if you get caught when he visits, that's when your world fall apart. That's when disease break out. That's when careers are destroyed. That's when homes are broken up. Saints, as never before, it's time to get right with God. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bible said, and I, I feel like preaching and wrapping this up, but I heard him, I heard him say in Psalms 53, you see, if you read 53, uh, and you read 14, they read almost identical, but there is a significant change. Uh, yes, in 53, it says the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Word God, there is Elohim. There is no Elohim. There is no God. Elohim is not necessarily a reference to the God of the Bible. Right. Elohim is a reference to the existence of a supreme being. Yeah. Right. Elohim alone can be placed into other religions. Right. Then I heard him say, the fool says, there is no Elohim. And then he says, corrupt they are. Notice this godless arrogance. When the fool says there's no God, then the fool begins to live any kind of way. See, the fear of the Lord will sanctify you. The fear of the Lord will cause you to come out. The fear of the Lord will cause you to give up sin. This is why you need to love the Lord, see. The fear of the Lord produces a certain fearful looking and, 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 and causes your conscience uh, to bother you. It says they are corrupt. Uh, uh, they are corrupt and, uh, and have done abominable iniquity. And there is none that doeth good. And Psalms 53 says, God look down from heaven upon the children of men to see, uh, praise the Lord, if there was any uh, who understood and who seek, who did seek God. Notice verse 2 of 53 says, Elohim, look down to the children of men to see if there was anybody seeking Elohim. But I heard him in 14 and verse 2. It doesn't say Elohim look down. It says the Lord look down. Yahweh. What's the significance of that? You see, the Bible not only tells us that there is a God, but the Bible tells us who that God is and what his name is. Nature tells us that there is a God. Yes, Psalms 19 says the heavens declare the glory of Elohim and the firmament showeth his handiwork. It says day unto day utter his speech and night unto night showeth knowledge and there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out throughout the whole earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of her chamber, rejoicing as a strong man ready to run a race. And look at this, and his going forth is from the, uh, from the end of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. 
and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. This is how nature tells us that there is a God. The created universe says there is a God. You talked about it quick. There is an intelligent being, an intelligent creator. Look at the intelligent design of the universe. The trees, praise the Lord, the leaves wave it. The birds sing it. The lions roar it. The cows moo it. They're telling us all the time that there is a God. The hurricanes blow it. The strong winds drive home the point. But nature can't tell you who that God is. How do we find out who God is? We turn to the same Bible and we go to the same Psalm. Psalm 19 and verse 7. It doesn't say God, but it says the law of Yahweh. The law of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say his name is Yahweh. His name is Jehovah. He's the God of the Bible. It's the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Good God Almighty, the testimony, not of God, but the testimony of the Lord is sure. See, he's not, he's not dealing with any God in general, but now he's talking about God in particular, the specific God that we serve. If you serve a specific God, and if that specific God is the God of the Bible, would you give praises right now to the God of the Bible? God Almighty, God Almighty, the law of the Lord, his testimony is pure, making wise the simple, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart, hallelujah, the commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, and the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever, the judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous are all together and more to be desired than gold yea than fine gold and then they're sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb so when the fool says there is no God the fool misses out for if you don't believe there's a God then you have no wisdom because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom See, the fool begins to behave with disrespect to the God of the Bible. He disrespects the church, disrespects the saints, disrespects the order. Well, when you begin to behave this way, doesn't matter how many degrees you have, doesn't matter what school you've gone to, I don't care if you're a member of the Ivy League, you're still a fool because the fear of the Lord is the starting point of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Do I have anybody here who fears the Lord today? I fear the Lord. I'm going, I'm getting closer to him. Do I have anybody tonight who want to draw nearer to the God of the Bible and you want him to clean up your heart, clean up your ways, Clean up your spirit. Want God to take away everything that's not like it. Everything you're not pleased with. Every thought, every behavior. Why? Because I fear you and I know you're real. I make it say my God is real. For I can feel it down in my soul. My God is real. Good God Almighty. Say yes! Say yes! Ah! Ah, yes, Lord! Somebody praise him in this place. Clap your hands to the hurt. Give him glory to your voice strings. He's real! He's real! He's real! Ah! Ah! He's real, he's real, 
it's going to affect the way I walk. He's real. It affects the way I talk. And instead of living an ungodly life, I want to join them who are busy seeking the Lord, who are busy saying, Lord, reveal your will to me. Lord, reveal your mind to me. Lord, I want to be caught up in your will. Lord, ah, ah, Lord, somebody praise the Lord. Right there, I feel like right here is a good place to just let the reverence, those who just believe that he's real, to just worship him right here. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 He's real. He's real. He's real. The, the atheists can have it. Hallelujah. He made the heavens and the earth. The evolutionists can have it. I'm not the result of, of a big bang theory. God made me who I am. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a presser instead of running away from the God of the Bible. It is better for me that I draw near unto the law. Perhaps somebody tonight who wants to draw near, perhaps somebody tonight who wants to get closer, perhaps somebody tonight who says I want more, perhaps somebody tonight who still want to go higher, who still, oh Lord, who still saying Lord, oh Lord, do it in my soul, do it in my heart, do it in my mind, do it in me. Where are you tonight? Where are you tonight? If you want more. somebody's hand and say neighbor don't be a fool be a press don't run from Jesus but run toward him run to the altar run to the cross run to prayer meeting run to your Sunday morning service Run to Sunday night service. Run, run, run. Oh, Lord. Run. You know what I hear in my spirit? I hear some presses. I don't want you to fool me, but I hear in my spirit some presses just continuously crying out to the Lord, saying, Ma, 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 if you want more, cry out to him and say, Ma. Higher heights, deeper depths, love. Lord, my. 
about the atheist now, I'm talking about the presser. Lord, I believe on you. Lord, I put my faith in you. Lord, I know you're real. I know you're able. Woo, Lord. I know. Oh, I know that the Lord is real. I know that God is able. the world. I don't want the club. I don't want the woke movement. I don't want all these crazy fads that's breaking out. I don't want church that don't have a cross in it. I don't want to worship in a dark temple. I don't want to worship in a church where when it's time to worship the Lord, they, they drop the lights. I don't want to worship, praise the Lord, in a church well, you can't tell the Lord thank you. Can't speak in tongues. Can't shout when you get happy. I don't want to work. I don't want to, Lord. I don't want to worship in an environment where we treat God like we're going to the ball game. Heard the Lord God of the Bible says in Jeremiah, in Malachi's writing, he says, I am a great God and greatly to be praised. Then I heard him say, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. I heard him say, who is likened unto me? Before me there was no God formed. Hallelujah. He's mighty. I don't care how impressive the fool is. Anybody who tells you, well, we can do wrong. God won't do anything. We can do this. That's the fool. That's what he's talking about. Uh, Crystal, you can do this. You can do you can smoke, drink, fornicate, or, or commit adultery, do all that stuff on the side. God's a forgiving God. Don't worry about that. See, if you if you fall for that and you begin to walk in that behavior, that behavior actually says there is no God. That behavior makes you a fool because there is a God. There is a God. There is a God. And whether you agree with it or not, see, they brought us so much stuff that messed us up. Uh, 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 preacher, they messed us up. Well, I ain't claiming that. Let me tell you something. God's truth is God's truth, whether you claim it or not. Man, coughing, ca coughing, got about to die. Well, I ain't. I got a cold, but I ain't gonna say it. I don't want to claim it. It claims you. You, 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 you sick. You are sick. Whether you claim it or not. Whether you claim it or not. No, no, no. That's a God, and He's merciful. Aren't we glad of that? Woo! He's kind. But don't walk in a godless arrogance. Where I feel I can do you any kind of way, do you any kind of way, you, 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 just do, you mistreat Pam, just do any kind of way, and then behave as though nothing will ever happen to me. You take advantage of the poor, you, you, you're not nice, you won't, you won't treat people right, you, uh, all, all these things, and we walk in our arrogance as though that will never be any consequences, but after all, I'm the bishop. But uh, last time I checked, bishops die. Last time I checked, supervisors die. Last time I checked, position holders die. Credential holders die. Movie stars die. Politicians die. Every man got to stand before the Lord. And I'll tell you something too. The consequences don't just come in death, after death. 
You can ruin, you can ruin your whole life. And, and, and the, Lord, the Lord didn't want to do it. The Lord didn't want to do it. The Lord, oh, he just put it off so long. But we mis, misread his mercy. We misread the mercy of what we thought we were. We thought we were just that slick. We thought we were that smart, that cunning. It wasn't that. It was just his mercy. I'm, I'm smarter than everybody else in the church. Don't nobody see me. It, it's not that. It's his mercy. But if you don't, give in. Eventually, he comes to visit. Then you know what you find out? That's a God. <laughs> but I don't want to find out that way. I want to cleave to the old rugged cross. Lift your hands to him. Oh, my Lord. Father, we come before you as a jurisdiction, but we come before you as individuals. Lord, we know that you're real. Lord, we do not want to behave like imbeciles. We do not, oh God, want to behave, Heavenly Father, in an impious manner. Oh, Father, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our shortcomings. In the name of Jesus. And oh, God, we turn toward you. And we reach up to you. We reach up to you. We reach up to you. We see service in a new light. We see worship in a new light. We see the necessity of assembling ourselves together in a new light. We resist the spirit of apathy that is in this age. Oh God, touch every young person. God, give them strength to stand against these contrary doctrines. Hallelujah, the doctrines, these philosophies, and all of these things. Oh, God, touch right now. Give our kids power to stay safe in school, to get their learning but not lose their burning. Oh, God, we want them to make high grades, but what's a high grade and no Holy Ghost? What's good grades and no fire? Father, set our young people's souls on fire. And God, let the fire fall as never before and not just the young people but oh God we we adults as we age as we grow older God we don't want to grow meaner we don't want to lose our joy we don't want to lose our spark but father right now revive us again in the name of Jesus put it in us Lord to praise you like we did when we first believe, put it in us, Lord, to have that spark in our eye, to get that joy back, to get that, uh, oh God, that skip in our step back in the name of Jesus. For you are worthy and church is worthy. The kingdom is worthy. The move of God on the earth, witnessing, winning souls, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, witnessing, sharing our faith, standing against the wickedness in society, fighting for the unborn, fighting for marriage, fighting for our families, fighting for our sons, fighting for our daughters, doing it all in the name of Jesus, giving, tithing, sowing, Shouting, dancing, singing, giving your glory, giving your praise, lifting our hands. Hallelujah. Jesus, we press toward the prize of the high calling. We press into the kingdom. We press for the more of God, for the more of God. We want more. We want more. We want to go higher. We want to go higher. We don't know it all. We haven't arrived. We're not there. 
We're on our way. We're on our way. Touch us. Touch us now. Touch us now. Touch us now. Touch us now. Make us pressers. Make us pressers. Not fools. Make us pressers. Not laid back Christians. Make us pressers. Make us praisers. Prayer warriors. Worshippers. Holy livers. Preachers. Teachers. Evangelists. Pastors. Apostles. Love. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it. I want everybody who's been filled with the Holy Ghost to ask God right now for a refilling. <laughs> Feel me again. And if you've never been filled, ask God to feel you right now. Father! Send on the Holy Ghost. Let your power fall in this place. Oh, oh Lord, let your power fall. Woo! All over the house. Everybody crying out. Everybody reaching up. Everybody wanting more. Everybody going to the next level. Everybody climbing higher. Everybody moving up in God. Do it for us, Jesus. Do it for us, Jesus. Do it for us, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For the next, just for the next minute, begin to tell Jesus how much you love him. Oh, I love you, Jesus. 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 Love him, love him, love him, love him, love him, love him. I love you, Jesus. Serving you is not a strain. I love you, Jesus. Serving you is not hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. I love you, Jesus. It's a privilege to be in the kingdom. I love you, Jesus. It's a privilege to be on this altar tonight, getting blessed of God. I'd rather be on this altar being blessed of God than to be at the amphitheater listening to Leonard Skinner. I'm glad tonight. I'm glad tonight. I'd rather be on the altar than the most plush club in the city. I'm glad tonight. I'd rather be born again and name the name of Christ than to be in any religion on the face of this earth. I'm glad. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Glad. Glad. Come on, pressers. We're at the close of the service. But I am glad. He made me glad. Glad, glad, glad. Everybody who's glad. 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 Glad, glad. Glad, 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 glad. Glad, glad, glad. Glad, glad, glad. You better know your privilege tonight. You better know your privilege tonight. Take your hand and lay it on the shoulder of your neighbor. Tell God, touch my neighbor. Touch my friend. <laughs> my fellow presser. Mm -hmm. Even when we leave this place and go to our separate churches and go to our neighborhoods, let us keep the fire. Let us keep the fire. He 
made me glad. He made me glad. I got to turn this loose, but the Holy Ghost is doing something in him right now. I wonder, can we at this AIM service just go back in for just one more minute? Just one more minute. Go back in, go back in. glad to the top of your voice let him hear you down the street let the praises go up person next to you, tell them, let's press, let's press.